Mandla. Mandla. Viva EFF Viva. Tata EFF Tata. Tata EFF Tata. Oza 2024 Oza. Oza 2024 Oza. Thank you very much, uh, SG and all our election uh, structures that are here, the officials of our movement, conveners and coordinators of provincial election task forces, regional election task forces, sub-regional election task forces that are with us here today. I welcome you all in the name of economic freedom in our lifetime and in the name of total electoral victory in the war to come, which is the 2024 national and provincial elections. We are gathered here today not to have long-winded discussions or debates, but rather to contribute meaningfully to the creating of a comprehensive election strategy that will ensure the liberation of our people and the liberation comes through the election victory of the EFF in 2024. In order to create these strategies, however, we need to reflect on the prevailing conditions that confront us and the importance of using history as our guide towards victory. Fellow fighters, we use history as a guide to victory in order to avoid making the same mistakes as our predecessors who have, betrayed, who have betrayed the revolution as power and access to privilege overwhelms them. We use history as a guide so that we can learn from those who, whom we seek to overthrow and draw lessons from where they had, they had the right intentions but lack the moral and revolutionary consciousness to fulfill the deepest, the deepest aspiration of our ancestors and the aspirations of our people. We are therefore here, comrades, not out of fear that we may lose, but out of caution that we will win, but we must know what we will do with the victory. We are here because victory loves preparation but it is equally our revolutionary responsibility to equally plan for the day after our victory. What do we do the day after we win? Where do we begin? And where do we intend to take our nation, our continent, and our people? I therefore welcome you, comrades, to what is not only an election workshop, but a workshop of an organization that needs to position itself as an organization that is ready to govern. Over the next two days, you therefore need to apply yourselves diligently to thinking about how we achieve victory and what we'll do after the achievement of the victory. We need you to guide the organization on how we'll confront the historical enemy which has taken a decision to locate the EFF as enemy number one in our society. It is a workshop that requires of all of you to provide your inputs and analysis on how those we are competing with in the political terrain are exploiting the deepest anxieties of our people and using them to build a political base for the white ruling and capitalist establishment. Fellow fighters, you form part of the election machinery that will deliver economic freedom in our lifetime. Our lifetime is now in your hands and it no longer means a distant future. But our lifetime is now the immediate tomorrow and that tomorrow is 2024. We have called upon you to seize the moment 
a moment that we have defined as our own 1994. It is our 1994 because it is an opportunity to usher in the freedoms our people have been denied since the so-called democracy was ushered in. It is a moment that we are calling upon you to seize because you are faced with an opportunity to fulfill the dreams of economic freedom that were betrayed in 1994 and have led to the misery and poverty of our people today. We have invited you to the battlefield as soldiers of dreams that were denied in 1994 and your task now is to make those dreams a reality in 2024. In 2024, history calls upon you to make the dreams of the return of the land, the return of our mineral wealth, the provision of free decolonized education, housing and primary health care a reality. You must make South Africa a safe place and fight criminals fire with fire so that our people live in peace. You are with us here today, fellow fighters, because you have proven that the revolution can depend on you when necessary. The gift that is being given to you for being a dependable and a reliable soldier of the revolution is the opportunity to liberate our people. Fellow fighters, when this economic emancipation movement called upon you to defend its legacy and celebrated its decades of unbroken struggle in the face of our enemies, you availed yourself. You are a collective that did not hide when the EFF, which, was, which has honored you with the titles and positions, called upon you to honor it in return. You honored the EFF by ensuring that its greatest celebration was a success. It will therefore be incorrect. It will therefore be incorrect of me to not send my appreciation to all of you seated here who led the success of the 10th year anniversary of the EFF and put this organization on a global map. You are soldiers that I'm certain I could go to war with and die beside as we pursue the freedom of our people from centuries of humiliation and land disposition. The war, however, comrades, is not over. It is in fact only the beginning. The revolution has given us a new task and that is a task of rising to the moment, and that moment is 2024. It is a moment that requires of us to be brave, disciplined, and ever ready to confront and destroy any obstacle, because an obstacle in the way of the EFF is an obstacle in the way of the freedom of our people. We need you to be trained soldiers who are able to rise to any task that may be assigned to you. We need you to be mass mobilizers, fundraisers, scholars, and the first line of defense of the EFF in private and public spaces. We have had a year that tested all of us and required of us to push ourselves to our limits. Within that year, we have asked much of many of you, and one of those requests is that all of us must return to school and adequately equip ourselves as we are at the door of governance. I hope this instruction was not taken lightly, and I hope no one has bargained that the EFF will forget its instruction for its leaders to be educated. The EFF has not forgotten, and as we edge closer to complete governance, our memory will be reawakened. Fellow fighters, we need not ever undermine the need for preparedness of the day after victory, for it is when we will truly be tested on our ability to lead society. The day after victory will be the true proof as to whether our victory 
was not based on opportunism and personal desire, but a genuine interest in uplifting the lives of ordinary poor people in South Africa. We must draw lessons from not only our ideological pillars on the need to be deliberate in our planning, but also we must be deliberate in the political education and development of the soldiers of our movement because it is these soldiers who will carry the burden of governance. We must draw a lesson from the unpreparedness of those who came before us, from the poverty of development from within the former liberation movement of Africa, and it is this lesson that will make us a viable post-colonial alternative. It is this unpreparedness that has made Africa a perpetual victim of the West and has allowed imperialism to render us as a conquered people upon whose backs the world stands. It is the unpreparedness by the post-liberation movement of Africa to preside over the means of production and to chart a sustainable political and social and economic way forward that has led our nation to degenerate to war, poverty, corruption and starvation. The unpreparedness of those who led the battle for political freedom in Africa has led to a self-compromise and dependency on those who conquered us. And as a result, we have never escaped the hands of colonialism and imperialism. The unpreparedness is what Franz Fanon refers to in the pitfalls of national consciousness. It is an unpreparedness that leads those who have liberated, uh, liberated us to play a role of reminding us of the victories of the past as a way to blackmail us into submission because they never had a plan for the future. It is the lack of the planning for the day after victory that leads to an infertile and the undevelopment, underdevelopment class of politicians assuming political power but not knowing what to do with that power after day of victory. It is Franz Fanon who makes a prophecy that we can see with our so-called liberators today. It is Fanon who tells us that, open quote, the party which during the battle had drawn itself the whole nation is now falling apart. The party is becoming a means of private advancement. Close quote. The party of liberation in South Africa is falling apart. And as it falls apart, we are able to see that it was never prepared for the day after victory. The so-called liberators of South Africa continue to prove their unpreparedness in all spheres of society, a society which is today in a state of collapse. The so-called liberators of South Africa appoint people to preside over state-owned enterprises such as in OSCOM, and then when these people fail as we predicted they would, they conveniently say that they are apartheid spies and right-wingers, yet they are the ones who appointed them. They have no right to call Ramaphosa an apartheid spy or an agent of imperialist forces because they are the ones who deployed him in a position he is. They deploy people when those people fail them, they think they've got a right to label them. They have no right to label those who have failed us as a result of the Al-Qaeda deployment. The so-called liberators prove their unpreparedness when a building burns in the city of Johannesburg, a building that they have allowed to collapse, degenerate, and succumb to hijack, and they turn around and blame apartheid and foreign nationals. The so-called liberators of our country were not prepared for the day after victory because they had no political will or intention to reverse the cardinal scene of land theft and the monopolization of our minerals by a white minority. The EFF, whose moment is 2024, cannot afford to make this mistake. We must never make the mistake of winning the battle and then because we never prepared for victory, our role becomes to constantly remind our people 
of the battles we have won in the past. Lindiwe Susulu is the most uneducated and foolish minister you can think of. Every time she opens her mouth, instead of telling people about what she's doing, she's consistently reminding them of how she fought in the bush and how they liberated us, creating an impression that we owe her and her colleagues something. We owe them nothing. No one sent them to the bush. They went because they wanted to go to challenge the material condition at the time. And therefore, they must never behave like we owe them anything. We don't owe them anything. We have actually honored them by electing them in 1994. For 30 years, we have been thanking them. And 30 years is enough to thank those who have liberated us. <laughs> Comrades, Preparedness for victory begins with education, so that you don't, out of lack of superior logic, you always say to the people, but we are the ones who removed the Zuma, we are the ones who challenged the ANC. Do not remind them of history, for because if your history is genuine and legit, that history will speak for you. Let your work speak for you and not what you did in the past. We need leaders who will be guided by superior logic and always answer questions with decisiveness and educated answers. We need leaders of the EFF to be educated because it is you who must occupy the highest level of legislative, judicial and executive power. It is leaders of the EFF, its grassroots constituents, its scholars, its youth, who must flood the civil service, the political and economic administration, and all spheres of South Africa. It is people who are trained politically and at the level of scholarship on the ethos and consciousness of economic freedom who must lead South African society so that we do not find ourselves appointing right-wingers to preside over the affairs of a socialist state. We need the layers of the EFF to be educated, otherwise we will find ourselves leading with the incapable and leading with those who are directly opposed to what we seek to achieve in South Africa. Fellow fighters, it is the duty of the EFF to expose that the philosophies of the conqueror and the conquered cannot coexist. It will be our job to ensure that this does not happen at the level of the state. It will be our duty to expose that you cannot build an economy through the dependency on foreign direct investment and debt from the IMF and World Bank. But it takes deliberate state intervention and massive industrialization to build an economy. It is our responsibility to expose that the privatization of our ports, of our energy capacity, of our railway networks, and means to provide water and basic services cannot be a solution and cannot coexist with the ideals of building state capacity and destroying the corruption that is only possible through the collusion with the very private sector that the right-wingers want us to surrender ourselves to today. The EFF will never allow its government to be held at ransom by an established clique in the corridors of the state. But to prevent this, we must build capacity and create the perfect socialist and educated civil servant. We need you to be educated, to be professionals, so that we do not self-sabotage like the outgoing ruling party and have our own enemies telling us what, we can, what can be done and what cannot be done at the level of policy. So comrades, let us prepare for victory. Build, but let us build internal capacity so that when we know what we are doing, the day after victory doesn't shock all of us. How do we arrive at the day after victory? which we will have prepared for. It is important.
for all of us here to understand that the character of the EFF election campaign will be centered on the people. It is a campaign that is based on the principle of umtuemtuini, mutumutung, which means it is a campaign that is rooted in the direct interaction with our people. There is no any other style or way that we are going to run this campaign. There is no shortcut or alternative. At the core of everything that we are doing is the principle of umtu emtuin. Why do we say this? Why are we so deliberate about the fact that you must speak to our people directly one by one? It is because our revolutionary movement that belongs to the people, the only way to get the votes of the people is to speak to them directly. We must all collectively humble ourselves and go to teach and go to each and every one and explain to them who we are and what change we are going to bring into their lives. The election campaign of the EFF is a people's campaign and everything that we do will be about the people. Our manifesto is a people manifesto and our victory will be a people's victory. As the soldiers of Um Twin Twin campaign, your weapons will be the founding manifesto of the EFF and the people's manifesto, which will be a product of a broad-based consultation with the masses of our people. It is from the Um Twin Twin campaign that we will know what is needed by all communities, not at a general level, but intimately to the level of the VD. It is from the Um Twin Twin campaign where we will know where our votes are coming from and from whom. It is, this, it is that campaign that will guide us on who must be assisted with transport and be taken from which street to which VD. This Mutumutu EFF election campaign is the only organic way of securing the votes of our people without any illusion of what we are to expect from the ballot. We expect each and every one of you to visit homes on the streets one by one and get a confirmation from our people as to whether they agree to vote for the EFF or whether they are undecided. It is your task to visit our people, respect them, ask for their time and convenience, convince them of the project of economic freedom in our lifetime. Anyone who says no to voting for the EFF will not be included in those whom are our base for electoral victory in 2024. Fellow fighters, we expect you to have the utmost discipline during this campaign. Do not interact with our people under the influence of alcohol. Do not smoke when you are talking to our people. Do not be violent when canvassing the votes and arguing our people to register to vote for the EFF. As of today, all of you in these election structures and all ground forces of South Africa, you are the ambassadors of the EFF, and in you, our people see us. You are our, e our eyes and ears, and you must always know that we, wherever you are, you carry the pride and the dignity of our movement. Fellow fighters, for this campaign to be a success, we will need to speak to at least 10 million people who positively confirm that they will vote for the EFF in 2024. We must have the verified information of 10 million South Africans for whom, for whom we will be responsible to ensure they vote for the EFF and deliver this people's government in 2024. In order to speak to 10 million people, we will need registered and confirmed verified volunteers who are not less than 465,920. Those are the fighters who are card carry members of the EFF who have confirmed that indeed I am a volunteer of the EFF at this VD. It is not a plain thing 
that in the next month all of these 465,000 volunteers of the EFF must have been registered and confirmed by the head office of the EFF one by one. Do not lie to the organization about the volunteers of the EFF. No one will be a volunteer of the EFF in a VD where you are not registered to vote. All of us must be volunteers in the VDs where we are registered to vote. These volunteers must be trained on the road to victory manual of the EFF. They must be orientated and educated on the policies of the EFF and they must be of high character, discipline and dedication as they are going to deliver the victory of the EFF. I'm speaking to you here, not worried about what is going to happen on the election day. What worries me is the day after the election day, because for me, I'm preparing for a victory day, not for the day of the elections. <laughs> Fellow fighters, seated here today, you are all part and parcel of election structures of the EFF, which is in the main uh, a product of the conversation of the of the constitutional structures of the movement. We have converted all of the EFF constitutional structures so that the, the central focus of all those who are now part of election task forces is elections and nothing else. Furthermore, the election task forces give us an opportunity to integrate dedicated fighters and volunteers into the elections machinery of the EFF and excuse those who may not be adding value at any particular point in time. All those who have been elected remain leaders of the EFF constitutionally, but your seats of being elected leaders will not be an excuse for you to be retained in our election machinery even when you are not of value to our structures. Your role your role, comrades, is extremely important to the future of this country and will not hesitate to request those who become obstacles to step aside and allow us to do our work. The Central Election Task Force is established by the Central Command Team as the central organ and high decision-making body of the EFF for purposes of election work. The Central Election Task Force holds the body of the EFF for the purpose of elections work. The Central Election Task Force holds the power to appoint and dismiss conveners, coordinators, and all other members of election task forces at all levels of the organization and may delegate such power to lower structures. The Central Election Task Force is convened by the President and the Commander-in-Chief and coordinated by Secretary General. The Central Election Task Force is composed of all members of the CCT, conveners and coordinators of provincial and regional election task forces. The CTF may invite experts and other skilled people to be permanent or temporary members of the CTF. The CTF meets bi-weekly or as and when it is needed. The Provincial Election Task Force are established by the Central Election Team, Central Command Team, and are responsible for the coordination of election work at the provincial level. The convener and coordinators of the PETFs are appointed by the Central Command Team and PCT members with specific functions and deployments constitute the entirety of the PTF regional and sub-regional conveners and coordinators of the election task forces are members of the PTF and the PTFs meet bi-weekly or as and when it is needed. The regional election task forces are established by the central command team and are responsible for the coordination of election work at the regional level. The conveners and coordinators of the RETFs are appointed by the Central Command Team and RCT members with specific functions and deployments constitute the entirety of the RTF. 
sub-regional conveners and coordinators of the election task forces are members of the RETF. The RETFs meet bi-weekly or as and when it is needed. The sub-regional election task forces are established by provincial election task forces and are comprised of all BTFs, conveners and coordinators and sub-regional election task forces meet weekly or as and when it is needed. Branch election task forces are composed of the branch command team and ward command team of the EFF and necessarily all voting district conveners and coordinators. The BTFs are responsible for all election work at what level? Voting district election task forces, VDETFs, are established by BTFs and must have a minimum of 20 EFF ground forces who are strictly registered to vote in the designated voting district. VD, VDETFs meet on daily basis to coordinate work for door-to-door, person-to-person, and intensify election campaigns. VDETF must designate its members as street and block or village coordinator responsible for the work of the organization in that particular street, block, or village. EFF party agents will strictly be recruited from members of the VDETFs and VDETFs must have operation centers and must always report on election work. Street volunteers, volunteers are members of the EFF who volunteer to do work for the EFF on daily basis and must report to VDETFs. All of these task forces have the responsibility of delivering the victory of the EFF by all means necessary. Fellow fighters, part of the lessons that are required in the quest for victory is the ability to self-sustain our own revolution. The successful 10th anniversary program held were part and parcel of the training ground we developed for the internal machinery of the EFF to self-sustain its own revolution. There is no election we are going to win if we do not have the ability to mobilize resources to strengthen our internal capacity as individual leaders of the EFF. The mistake that many tend to make when we refer to resources is to think that resources refers to money alone. But money is not the only resource that is required of a revolutionary. A revolutionary and a true representative of the people is able to organize an operation center within their community and does not expect the organization to pay for the sustainability of that operation center. A grassroots activist who is in touch with critical stakeholders of society can mobilize food for volunteers, can mobilize transport for volunteers and for voters to voting stations without spending any money because you are in touch with society and its motive forces. We need these types of activists if we are to fulfill the mandate of our people which is to win elections and deliver their freedom. There is no election we can win if amongst us there are those who practice dependency on EFF for every single task and responsibility that will deliver our victory. You must fundraise. You must, and you must do so in a creative and in a manner that will not jeopardize the organization because the enemy is scared and is looking for anything to destroy the EFF before we achieve our moment in 2024. In your efforts to fundraise, protect the image of the EFF and do not do things that are illegal. You must always comply with the law and make sure that your donations, if they are beyond the threshold, they are declared. Please, if you want to make sure that you stay within the law, do not cross the threshold with one individual. When one individual is about to reach a threshold in 
his donations to the EFF, leave him alone and go to a different one so that you don't pass the threshold and you don't have the irritation of having to declare to white capital that established this law to want to monitor and compromise the EFF. Comrades, we were harsh with those who failed to organize transport for their constituencies to come to the EFF 10th anniversary rally because that was a clear indication that they will not be able to rise to the occasion of 2024. And to keep them amongst us will be tantamount to a betrayal of our people. The instruction to organize these passes was not a financial exercise. It was a political and ideological test to all EFF public rep representatives. We were testing if you have the political capacity to organize for the movement. And we were testing if you have the ideological capacity to appreciate that you cannot go to a celebration of the movement while you leave those you claim to represent behind. The battlefield for 2024 will be unforgiving and as a result the EFF has to be unforgiving to those who do not have a political and ideological appreciation of the instruction we gave them. We stand here today knowing how many soldiers we have and what they can do. We stand here and declare better few than many who will make us plan with numbers that we do not have in reality and lead us into an ambush. We are here today strictly with dependable forces of the revolution. All of you who are seated here, you were vetted and part of the vetting included whether you paid for a bus. And all of you have passed the vetting because you are dependable forces of our movement. We say to you today, much more will be expected in terms of fundraising for our movement and you dare not fail as you'll be failing generations before you and you'll be failing those who are going to come after you. Fellow fighters, we must take this opportunity to congratulate the EFF Student Command on the numerous victories it has registered in campuses over the past couple of weeks. As things stand, the EFF Student Command is the majority and leading party at the University of South Africa, at the University of the Western Cape, at the Northwest University in Mafeking Campus, at the University of Limpopo, in the University of Free State, at the Tswane University of Technology, and many other universities. The EFF is immensely proud of its student movement which is living up to its responsibility of mobilizing the youth behind the banner of economic freedom. We are confident in the complete victory in all of the upcoming SRC elections as a sign that the young intelligentsia of South Africa is aligned with the future of this country and that future is the EFF. The duty of all election task forces of the EFF now is to ensure that all of those votes in the campuses are converted into EFF votes and this begins with aggressive voter registration drive and conversing of all those votes of EFF student command in all the campuses that we have won. We need the data registration and commitment to vote for the EFF from all those who have voted for us in the campuses we have won to ensure that we can deliver free quality and decolonized education as an EFF government. Fellow fighters, we have established now the Youth and Student Election Task Force whose role will not only be to mobilize students behind the EFF, but equally to mobilize millions of rejected youth of South Africa who are not in school or 
any form of formal employment. Let us support this structure and ensure that it maximizes its work in all corners of South Africa through a vibrant and conscious campaign that will rescue young people from voter apathy, alcohol and drug abuse. It is the EFF that must ensure that voting day is no longer a holiday for the youth of South Africa, but a day where they grab their future into their own hands. <clears throat> Fighters, we have established the Women's Mobilization Committee. It must mobilize all women of South Africa and ensure that these women are conscientized. They come together and send a strong and a clear message that Winnie Mandela might have died, but in reality, Winnie Mandela multiplied and that the women of South Africa are ready to confront the triple oppression they are confronted with. It is the Women's Mobilization Committee that takes over the work of the GBV desk of the EFF and confront head-on the problem of gender-based violence in South Africa. It is only through women leadership and women decisive intervention that we will be able to defeat GBV in South Africa and women occupy their rightful place in South African politics, in the judiciary, in the legislature, and in the executive. A woman's place is no longer in the kitchen as they prescribed those who hate women. The woman's place is everywhere where decisions are taken. Women must be there to ensure that men are well behaved and they are peaceful in their conduct and that they provide a cool-headed solutions to challenges confronting society. Fellow fighters, the domestic conditions in South Africa remain ripe for change, but the domestic conditions alone will never win us an election. We need to adequately communicate to our people that the conditions they are subjected to are not normal and can and must change. It is our duty to not fall into the campaign tactics and tricks of those who seek to divide African people in order to secure a vote. There has been much made about specific areas in our society that will be critical points in the 2024 election. And as you go into commissions, this must form part of your thinking strategies and tactics. It is our collective duty to constantly conduct political and ideological competitor analysis and counter information so that we can always undermine distortions by our enemies who seek to win of the divisions of Africans. The ruling party in South Africa, after having tested the ground through various proxies and puppets on the ground, has taken a deliberate decision that it will suddenly blame the social ills of our country on illegal immigrants. The very same ruling party that is African in its name has adopted as an election strategy that it will attribute its failures to African people. And it does, no, it does so to take advantage of our people and distract them from the fact that they have failed. They do this out of desperation and part of their strategy most recently is to invoke apartheid as a reason for their three decades of failure to change the lives of black people in South Africa. The lack of investment in education means that we do not have sufficient scientific, engineering and town planning capacity which leads to the overcrowding of buildings and the congestion of our people in townships and city centers where there are job opportunities. They blame their negligence on education and skills development on apartheid. It is the EFF that has long warned 
of the suspicious role of the NGOs in our country, which are funded by the likes of George Soros and have been an ally to various factions of the ANC since the dawn of democracy. Now, because it suits them, they have betrayed their NGO allies who have never held them accountable for issues such as the, sell, the sealing of the CR-17 documents, the Palapala farm saga, and the overall failing presidency of Cyril Ramaphosa. They are now able to blame NGOs because it suits their agenda. The ruling party in South Africa is attempting to play a delicate balance between being proud to have governed since 1994 while at the same time being so ashamed of its failures that they depict themselves as victims of the system. The EFF must be able to articulate that the domestic conditions of South Africa of collapsing infrastructure, lack of electricity, lack of water, lack of housing, and the rising cost of living must be blamed on the ruling party that was never prepared to govern in the first place. Our state-owned enterprises are being privatized by an accountable minister of private enterprise by the name of Jamnandas Godan, who is permanently sick whenever he has to account to parliament for his role in destroying our assets. We must articulate this to our people who suffer chronic load shedding and lack of affordable transport because a group of individuals are selling our national assets such as ESCOM and Transnet to the highest bidder. Fellow comrades, our institutions are compromised in defense of a president who has no capacity to take our country forward. The Office of Public Protector has been destroyed in defense of a money launderer. The office of the Reserve Bank has been destroyed in defense of a woman abuser called Cyril Ramaphosa. The office of revenue services has been destroyed in defense of Cyril Ramaphosa. I can tell you this without any hesitation. They are now attempting to destroy the IEC so that the IEC can defend Ramaphosa's defeat on the polls in 2024. But they must find out ready for them. We must never allow anyone who is a member of SATU or any member of the union that is aligned to COSATU to be part of the IEC. COSATU has declared on daily basis that it will support the ANC. How can members of unions aligned to COSATU be allowed to go and be presiding officers and IEC staff members at the VD level? I don't know these people. You know them very well. You are going to identify them and you are going to object them. And if you see them on election day working for the IEC, we will stop the VD until those individuals are removed because they've declared their intentions very clear. Comrades, why do you hire teachers? who are affiliated to SATU when there are so many young people in South Africa who are unemployed, who can get an opportunity on that day to work for one or two days and something and be able to earn something for a living. Comrades, there are a lot of people who are not registered to vote. Home affairs and IEC, they are refusing with the data of the people who are not registered to vote. Yes. When you are a South African, you have an ID. Home Affairs has got a data of all of us. Therefore, Home Affairs will have a data 
of all those who have turned 18 and above. And because the IEC works under Home Affairs, then Home Affairs will give to the IEC that these are the people who are 18 and above South Africans, all of them. Then the IEC will plug that into their system. Then it will tell them those who are registered and those who are not registered. Therefore, we'll have names, say names and addresses of people who are not registered to vote so that we can go to those people and convince them about voting. Because if you do not vote, you are actually voting for the ANC by not going to vote. So we need to convince these people. But the IEC is refusing with their data. I have asked, I have not seen it, that a letter, a legal letter, must be written to the IEC, putting it under terms to give us the data of unregistered voters of South Africa. And if the IEC refuses to give us the data, we must go to the electoral court and say, how are we expected to fight for free and fair elections when the IEC is refusing us with information that will create free and fair election and ensure that there is maximum participation on the election day after we have registered these unregistered voters. I hope and believe that that IEC has received that letter. Comrades, when we go into doing this work of campaigning, we must never forget that we are government in Johannesburg. Yes. And that when we campaign, we must never forget our responsibilities to the people of Johannesburg as MMC of public safety and health, respectively. Deliver to our people. Don't say, now we're going to elections, I'm no longer delivering to our people, I'm going to campaign. As MMC of public safety and health, the reason you are appointed, it is because you are an all-rounder. You can campaign and MMC at the same time and never neglect that responsibility. I'm very happy with the role that the MMC of public safety is playing in Johannesburg especially recently with hijacked buildings and the dilapidated buildings in the CBD of Johannesburg. We want him to continue to fight. I was very happy when you put that Panyaza in his place and uh, made sure that the voice of the municipality was heard because you are not under administration. Don't go into the municipality and think you have a responsibility to impress mayors and premiers of the ANC. You have no such a responsibility. Neither do you have a responsibility to respect them. They don't deserve our respect. They have sold out our people. We are in this situation because of them. My week was made. You see, my voice is and my nose are troubled. But when I saw the chairperson of Human Settlement and Infrastructure in Etequini going to give houses to the victims of 2019 floods, I was the happiest. That this is what our government must do. You must deliver to our people. When the MMC of Infrastructure in Mohali City continues to close put holes and go into the squatter camps and fight for opening roads, in, access roads into those uh, informal settlements. I'm happy because we said to our people, we'll do things differently. And he took the grader, the MMC of infrastructure in Moales City, and went into informal settlement and started opening roads so that pregnant women, when they are about to deliver, an ambulance can have access 
into that informal settlement. We don't have to wait for a tar road. We don't have to wait to be full in government. Whatever little resource we lay our hands on must be utilized to benefit the ordinary masses of our people. The MMC of Finance in Ekuruleni continues to make us proud by massively increasing revenue collection and ensuring that the finances of Ekuruleni municipality are in order. I watched him on TV the other day where he said they closed the books of the municipality and they've got a surplus of 300 plus million which they've not wasted through corrupt activities. The MMC of Waste Management, I saw you making the DA cry like babies when you took the trucks into Tembisa and Katleong to go and collect waste from the townships and informal settlements. The DA said when they were government, the trucks were not allowed to go into the townships, therefore they were sabotaged. It is not our problem. It is their own problem. No one can sabotage the government of the EFF in Ikurleni. We know the ANC tactics. We know when they are about to engage in shenanigans, we meet them toe for toe. That's why they will never sabotage the government of the EFF. The MMC of Health in Ikurleni visiting the clinics, talking to our people on the queues, in the clinics where the queues are long, the MMC, not out of the budget of the municipality, out of her own creativity, creating soup kitchens right outside the clinics so that when our people are queuing, they are able to eat something. We had previously been critical for the performance of the MMC of Nelson Mandela Bay and it is clear that our criticism, which is a self-criticism, was helpful as we are beginning to see their activities. As the MMC of Infrastructure and Engineering has embarked on initiatives to improve the sewer system in the municipality, while the MMC for Energy and Electricity has launched a load shading curtailment pilot project in the municipality. This project entails the installation of meters that will ensure that our people are still able to utilize lights, plugs and televisions when there is load shading at a limited rate. We, however, need more public service delivery initiatives not only from the MMCs of the EFF, but all public representatives. As it is the work of this nature that will be our track record of governance on the campaign train. We must begin to get reports from all the public representatives. Oh, my favorite place of Metsima Hulu, we have nothing to say about you for now because you have just come in as the MMCs. But we have full confidence in you, comrades. You have done things happen. And you are the biggest area where we drew our votes in 2021. We know that the people of Mezimaulu trust you and trusted you with their votes. That's why they will not expect anything less from you as you assume your responsibilities of being the MMCs. We said to you, members of legislature, parliament and councils, go and adopt schools, go and adopt clinics, go and adopt soup kitchens and communities around you and give them support. We said this to you every year reminding you even in the Caucasus. It's very painful now. 
Because for all of you in parliament and legislature, if you get nominated, you are going to have to fill in a form of the schools that you have adopted previously, the clinics, the community work, or any other thing that you did that uplifted the communities where you come from. Talking inside parliament, legislature and council is not enough. Do you want to go back to parliament? Do you want to go back to the legislature? Tell us why. If you have no track record of community work. We tell you all of this when we smile. When times are happier, you think we are joking. When we come to ask for accountability, you cry like crybabies and you even say, people hate you for nothing. I'm very happy for a change in the past 10 years that people get removed from their positions because they did not bring buses and they don't blame me as a dictator and say all bad things about me but they blame the chief for having removed them because he hates them from previous conferences. I was so happy, like for the first time, someone can be blamed. Musingizi doesn't play when it comes to those things of holding you individually accountable. So I don't want you to scream and then start blaming Musingizi for nothing. We told you before, you have not done your work. Accept that we left you for the past five years. Be grateful that we are even going to give you your pension from parliament for doing nothing. Why do you want to fight us if you don't go back for being lazy? Ask some of us. We find comfort by living amongst communities. We may stay in the suburbs, but we spend most of our time changing the lives of those who were told by their neighbors, their siblings and cousins that there will never be anything in society. We enjoy giving our people back their dignity and their lives. That's what we have done for the past five years. That's what we'll continue to do for the next decade because it is our job. We are not here to impress celebrities. We don't exist for television. We exist for those who are neglected and rejected masses of our people in the informal settlements, in the villages, in the townships, in the factories. All of those people are our friends. When you saw that stadium, they knew that they are going to the festival of their own because this movement belongs to them and no one else. I hope journalists will start reading the research reports that are given every quarter in this country and stop calling the EFF the Malema EFF. The research has confirmed undoubtedly that the EFF belongs to educated men and women, that the voters of the EFF are high earners in society, that the EFF as a brand has surpassed the brand Malema, and therefore it has assumed a life of its own. Those of you who thought that you can destroy this organization by associating it with an individual, you have successfully failed. Comrades, like I do it with a smile, I've done it before. All of you who are designed and who are given responsibility to chair commission on women, on communication, on the youth, on fundraising, on food banks, on voter registration and minority group, and all of you 
who are given a responsibility to serve in the election task forces of the EFF do so with discipline and dedication. Make sure you sacrifice your time with your family. We are just asking for the remaining seven or eight months of your time. From there, you will be delivered back to your families. Those who want to go into the ground with your families, you are more than welcome to take your families along and go with them to the ground. Where you are deployed, that's where you are going to vote, that's where your VD is. You vote where you are deployed as cadres of our movement, not where you come from, because you are a national citizen by virtue of being a national leader. Go and lead our people without fear. Go and lead our people with bravery. Go and lead our people with determination. Do not be scared. The enemy has declared us an enemy number one. We have said to the enemy, we have accepted to be enemy number one. We have accepted the call to the battlefield. Don't be scared of white monopoly capital. Don't be scared of the right wingers. If there is a voting station in the farm, we are going to enter that farm. We are going to be everywhere where a voter is found. All of you do this with discipline and dedication because the positions you are occupying are not positions that you are elected on. You are appointed into those positions. If you are not going to discharge your responsibility as expected, you must know, like I said, we'll ask you nicely, diligently, excuse us so that we can have someone who's going to lead this committee, who's going to lead this election task force with dedication and discipline. The EFF success for 10 years dependent on discipline and dedication. And I know and trust you that you are disciplined and dedicated and you fear nobody. You don't want to fail the masses of our people. And I know that with you, every street, every village, every township shall be painted red. Comrades, the call to action is, let's prepare for Victory Day. Let's make sure that when victory comes, it comes and find prepared people. Because if you are not prepared for Victory Day, you are going to fail and this work you are going to do will dwindle into nothing. It's useless to mobilize and win elections. And after elections, you don't know what to do with victory. We need dedicated men and women as you go to prepare for this election to know what is going to happen after the election day. Prepare for Victory Day, because 2024 shall present a Victory Day, and that Victory Day is the EFF in government, and the EFF is going to deploy well-qualified people who are going to govern all the provinces and all the departments that are there in South Africa. Let's make one point very clear. Do not practice to be a deputy minister because there won't be deputy ministers in the EFF government because those positions are useless positions and they waste a lot of money of our people. You want to be anything, prepare to be a minister. You want to be anything, Dr. Ndozi, I don't know. Prepare to be a premier in Gauteng. Not anything less than that. Because we are going to govern Gauteng whether they like it or not. Gauteng belongs to the EFF and no any other political party shall govern Gauteng. Comrade, the victory 
is coming and that victory is economic freedom in our lifetime. All of you, you only need two things. Do not impress anyone. Do not take the EFF victories to be yours. Do this with humility. Just make sure you carry with you two things, discipline and dedication. Why are you disciplined? Why are you dedicated? I'm preparing for the day after victory. Thank you very much.